ओम अज्ञान ज्ञानंजन शलाकाय चक्षुर्मीलितम ये नस्मय श्री गुरव नम The title of the lecture this evening is How to See God. So I must thank you all very much for coming. This is the uh, proper sub the best subject we can hear about. Generally we expect that if we have a discussion on how to see Sachin Tendulkar or Rajnikanth then many people will be interested. but we don't expect so many people to be interested in how to see god so i thank you very much for coming uh, this is the proper use of the human form of life is to seek out god we attain this human birth after many many births but by the force of maya most people don't utilize their human life properly this lady is standing with the baby there are more seats here if you want to sit आहार निद्रा भय मैथुन चाहमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुमानुम
all the great devas, they all offer divine prayers to him. Vedai Krama Upanishadaya Gayanti Yang Samagaha All the Vedas, the Upanishads, they all sing his glories. Dhyana Vastita Tadgatena Manasa Pashanti Yam Yogiraha The perfect yogas in, yogis in meditation see him. Yes, Yanta Navidu Sura Sura Gana Devaya Tasmai Namaha We offer our obeisance to that Supreme Lord who the end of whose qualities neither the devas the suras or the asuras, they cannot come to the end of his qualities. So, uh, so many people saw Krishna, but they didn't understand that he's the supreme person. Duryodhana, Duryodhana wanted to kill Krishna. He cannot kill Krishna, but he wanted to kill Krishna. And even such a great devotee as Arjuna, he saw Krishna, but at Kurukshetra, he was confused, still confused. He saw Krishna, but he thought, I have a better idea than Krishna. Arjuna thought, now I have to teach dharma to Krishna. He thought that actually this fighting is not very good. I'd better teach Krishna about this. So then Krishna taught, first of all, Krishna told Arjuna, actually, you think you know what you're talking about, but you don't, you're a fool. Nana. Asochananda, asochastrang, pragyavadam, chabhasasi, gadhasana, gadhasana. You can give the translation. So Arjuna saw Krishna, but he was still confused, and Krishna told him, You are a fool, you don't know the first point of spiritual knowledge. Now we understand that actually Arjuna is a great devotee, he's not at all a fool, but he appeared to be like that so that Krishna could speak Bhagavad Gita to him. So the point is that even... Yeah, then Krishna explained Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna and Arjuna understood everything. So the point is that even if we see God, unless we understand who He is, then simply by seeing Him, we may not be benefited very much. We have to recognize Him also. Just like for instance... The Prime Minister, he's always surrounded by so many people. So if he comes to Polachi, I don't think he'll come to Polachi, but we're just talking figuratively, imaginatively. <laughs> and then someone is appointed to give a speech of praise and then offer him a garland. So he gives a speech of praise, you're so great, you're so wonderful, you've done so many things. And then he walks up and puts the garland on the Prime Minister's bodyguard who's standing next to him. So he, does, he, he got it all wrong. He didn't recognize who is actually the right person. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna instructs Arjuna, and through Arjuna he instructs all pious persons like yourself who are interested to understand him. In uh, Bhagavad Gita is known as Tattva Gyan or knowledge of reality. So all these points we have to understand. Then when we, if, when and if we see God, we will recognize, yes, this is the right person. Therefore, our most revered spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, he went all over the world spreading Krishna consciousness, teaching Bhagavad Gita as it is. He came to establish Krishna is supreme. But if he was to come and say, someone would say, no, no, Jesus is supreme. Someone else would say, no, 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 this is your God. Someone else is supreme. And they'll go on arguing. And uh, it simply becomes sectarian. And many people think, what, well, all these religious people, they're just all fighting, they don't know anything, and they become atheists. But Srila Prabhupada presented that we should accept Krishna as supreme. Why? we should accept Krishna as Supreme. We are all parts and parcel of the Supreme, as Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita. Ramai Vamsho Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatanaha All the living beings are the Sanatan Anksha, the eternal particle of Himself. So uh, God is this Supreme Intelligence. So we also have intelligence being His part in human life, that intelligence is sufficiently developed that we can understand tattva jnana, knowledge of God. So this uh, Vedic culture is unique in as much as it doesn't say just believe in God, but 
gives the knowledge with which by our intelligence we can understand the science of God. Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam. So we find in Bhagavad Gita all these topics discussed. King Tat Brahma, King Adhyatman, King Karma, Purushottama. All the top, what is Brahman, what is the Supreme, uh, what is the Atma, what is Karma, what is Adhyatma, Adibhuta, Adidaiva, Adiyagya, all these points are discussed. Why are we suffering in this material world? How can we see God? All these topics are discussed at the platform of intelligence, not blind faith. So the first point of spiritual knowledge which Krishna teaches Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita is that we're not this body. This body is temporary, I am eternal. Before I had this body, I had so many bodies. And I will continue getting more and more and bodies one after another until I understand my relationship with God. So, uh, this body, we have material senses. These senses uh, we have acquired for the sake of trying to enjoy this material world. What is that? Shotram, Shotram, Chakshu, Sparshanam, Cha, Rasanam, Granam, Eva, Cha, Adhishtaya, Manas, Chaiva, Vishayanu, Prasevate. We get one body after another. We get the sense of hearing, touching, tasting, smelling, feeling, all for the sake of trying to enjoy this material world. So with our eyes, we try to see something that is enjoyable. With our ears, we try to hear something that is enjoyable. But as long as we have this attitude that I want to enjoy this material world, we are bound up in this material world. We, we cannot see God because we are trying to touch, taste, smell, feel and hear everything in this material world for our own misunderstood sense of pleasure. So how will we see God? The senses have to be purified from the misconception of trying to enjoy this material world. Atashri Krishna Namadi Nabhavet Grahyam Indriyai Sevun Mukhe Hiji Vado Swayameva Spuratyada With these blunt material senses, gross material senses, we cannot perceive the transcendence at Hoksaja. We cannot perceive his name, form, quality, pastimes, etc. But when we adopt the attitude, the attitude of service to him, then the senses become purified and he, out of his own mercy, manifests himself to our senses. So if we chant the name of Krishna, because the name of Krishna is non-different from Krishna, is all pure, our consciousness becomes purified. If we hear topics of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam from devotees of Krishna, then gradually we become infused with the consciousness of wanting to serve Krishna. So there is a whole process to purify every one of our senses. Instead of eating food for our own enjoyment, we cook nicely, we offer to Krishna, we take prasadam. And that purifies our sense of taste. In this way, all the senses become purified. When we have no desire to see anything in this material world for our own enjoyment, then we become qualified to see God. We may, we may think, well, how is that possible? We're in this world, we have to live in it. We can't all become sannyasis and just give up everything. But Krishna never says in Bhagavad Gita that you have to take sannyas to understand him. That could be helpful because in sannyas life, it's all right. In sannyas life, there is uh, supposed to be not, nothing but spiritual concentration. But significantly, Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, who was uh, married not only once but four times. That was normal for Kshatriyas to have more than one wife. And Krishna didn't tell Arjuna that you have to become a sannyasi. In fact, that was Arjuna's proposal to leave the battlefield and go begging, go for bhikshan. 
But Krishna told Arjuna, Mama no smara yudhyacha. You think of me and fight. Now it's not that everyone has to fight, that is specifically for kshatriyas. But the point is, everyone can think of Krishna and perform their activities in the world also. And Krishna, his very name means all attractive. So if we take up this process of Krishna bhakti, then gradually we will lose our interest in the very petty enjoyments of this material world. That doesn't mean we, again, that doesn't mean we become irresponsible. We have present here this evening uh, many dedicated devotees of Krishna who are very seriously practicing Krishna consciousness, who are married with their children, and they're going on with their family lives, but the center of their family life is not how to get money and food, but how to please Krishna. So anyone who becomes attracted to Krishna, then automatically we start to see Krishna. We start to see Krishna in every facet of our life. We see everything as Krishna's mercy. Especially in Kali Yuga, the best way to prepare ourselves to see Krishna is to chant the names of Krishna. It's a very simple process. Especially the uh, Maha Mantra is recommended. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If we chant this Maha Mantra with faith and love, that is sufficient. That changing this holy name will reveal Krishna. He will manifest himself. Just as Arjuna saw Krishna face to face and spoke with Krishna, we shall also. Arjuna is a very dear friend of Krishna. Bhaktu Sime Sakha Chaiti. Krishna said to Arjuna, You are my devotee, you are my very dear friend. But we can all have that intimate relationship with Krishna. It's not that because Krishna has some friends, he can't have more. In this very life, if we take up this practice of chanting Hare Krishna very seriously, then at the end of this life, we will not have to be born again. We can go to Krishna directly. Janma karma chame devyame vangyo veti tattvataha tyakva dehaṁ kunar janma naiti maameti sarjana. You can give it. So whoever you are, Whatever, however old you are or young you are, whatever else you have done previously in this life, if from now you take up this process of Krishna consciousness very seriously, then when you leave this body, you will not have to be born again. You can go directly to Krishna in the spiritual world to serve Him eternally in full bliss. Of course, you have to have faith in this. That faith is developed by understanding the knowledge that Krishna gives in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So again, we ask you, you, you to apply your God-given intelligence to understand this subject, the best subject, the subject of who is God, how to see Him, and how to serve Him. So that's a very brief overview of the subject. When we understand that everything in this world is no real value, Everything we do just leads to suffering. Then we should seek out that situation of eternal bliss. That is the spiritual world with Krishna. We can go there by chanting Hare Krishna. So please go. Don't wait here. I'm sure Palachi is a very nice place. I don't know. It's the first time I came here. But don't stay here forever. Anyway, we can't stay here forever. However much we may like our nice house and our nice family, material nature will boot us out. Where are we going? We don't know. We don't know where we came from. We don't know where we're going to. So take this knowledge from Bhagavad Gita. Live this life in such a way that at the time of quitting this body, you go to the spiritual world, to Krishna. Then you, then you will see Krishna eternally. Serve him eternally. This is the perfection of life. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Is there any question about this? Please ask. There may be so many questions. So, I'm not omniscient. I'm not God. I'm not Sarvagya. But as much as uh, I have learned from my merciful Guru Dave, I can attempt to answer.
Yes, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Your excuse is very nice. Thank you. Hare Krishna. The fourth question. Service to man, service to man, service to God is the same. But there are many other homies, earlier rishis, everybody is saying this. All men are men. And the question was. Where in Vedanta and Upanishad stated that service to man is service, service to God? To man is service to God. Where in Upanishad and Vedanta? Can you give one example from the Upanishads and Vedanta? Ah, can you say this, the verse? No, I know not who the... Ah, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that that's there. I, I believe this saying was made up by Vivekananda. No, everybody No, everybody, but you're saying Rishis and Upanishads. No, no. You should translate. Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the... Uh, Nigamakalpatara galitam phalam, the ripened fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic knowledge, that states yatatara moolam nishechenena tripyantitat skanda bhuta pushaka pranapaha rach chayatindrayanam tataiva sarvahana matyuteja. You know, you can get the translation. So if we serve a chuta, the Supreme Lord, then everyone else is served by that. It's not round the other way. I, I, this, this Vivekananda invented this uh, Manava Seva is Madhava Seva. So his idea was uh, actually to imitate the Christian missionaries that if you make hospitals and schools, that is service to God. And he invented the idea of Daridra Narayana that if you give clothing and food to the poor man, that is service to Narayana. But Narayana is Lakshmipati, he's not Daridra. So this is a great misunderstanding that's not in Ved Vedanta, it's from Vivekananda, who wanted to propagate this as a, uh, as uh, to stop the Christians. That was his idea. But you just consider if you feed a hungry man, then again he'll get hungry. You can, op- you can open schools and hospitals, and we're not against that, that's also required in human society. But opening schools and hospitals doesn't stop birth and death. So the best service to human society is to give the knowledge of how to get free from birth and death. Then they'll never be poor, they'll never be hungry, they'll never be sick. So the best service to God is to give knowledge of him to human society, and that's also the best service to human society. So in this way, service to man is service to God. If we serve man by giving him accurate knowledge of God, Otherwise, there's nothing inherently spiritual in giving bodily service. Even the dog, the mother, will look after her children. Is that spiritual? I don't think so. So that's why we sh- we always uh, we were taught by our Sri Guru Dev. We should also always base everything on shastra. Otherwise, there are so many funny ideas propagated which are not actually based on Shastra. So this idea that service to man is service to God, you presumed it's in the Upanishads, but it's not. So real real spiritual education is required. People in India, they spend lakhs and lakhs on their children's material education, but they don't think of the spiritual education. And for lack of spiritual education, so many bizarre things are going on. For lack of spiritual knowledge, so many people are worshipping these babas and saying they're Bhagavan, which has no basis in Shastra, no basis in reality. In Hindi there's this saying, Garv se kaho ham Hindu hai. Say it with pride, I'm a Hindu. But I don't know how proud you should be. You see, the Christians, they, they study the Bible, and the Muslims, they study the Quran. but it's hard to find anyone, Hindu, who knows even one verse of Bhagavad Gita. So, any question, please? There's another question here, please. Yeah, it's coming. Actually, to see God, to see God, the goal is to develop the concentration of how to get rid of some problems. That's why we go to God, but we see Christianity or Islam, there is only one God. But when we see So this looks a little complicated. If there is only one God, I think it will be easy to approach 
God means supreme. In Gita, Krishna says, Matav Paratharamna Anyat Kinche Dasti. No one and nothing is above me or superior to me. But God is not obliged to be as we would like him to be. He, uh, he is as he is. We are contingent on him. He is not contingent on us. So, uh, actually, God is one, but he takes many forms. Different devotees approach him in different ways. Uh, those who want to approach him in a very uh, respectful, majestic way, they approach him as Lakshmi Narayana. Those who uh, want to approach him in the manner of being uh, a, a citizen of a very loving and kind king, they approach him as Sitara. Those who uh, want to approach him in his most uh, playful and blissful aspect, approach him as Radha Krishna. So he enjoys himself by manifesting in various forms and he pleases his devotees in this way. We cannot say, well, there should be only one way if he himself wants to make himself available in many ways. Therefore, knowledge of God is required. Ah. Practically, if we ask so many people, they may say, well, God is like this. God. But who has got knowledge of God? In the Vedic tradition, there is so much knowledge of who he is. Mostly uh, in what we may say, other religions, there's no real knowledge. So if we understand Bhagavad Gita, everything, if we understand Bhagavad Gita as it is, everything will become very clear. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also discusses himself as the Supreme Lord and the various devas, the various demigods. He says, Aham Adir Hi Devanam. I am the origin of all the devas. So, uh, Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, Narasimha, all these different avatars, they are all Vishnu avatars. They are all manifestations of the one supreme God, performing various wonderful pastimes for the uh, upliftment of the world and the pleasure of his devotees. And Shiva, Shakti, Indra, Chandra, Vayu, they are all various devas. Of course, Shiva's position is very special. He is in one sense non-different from Hari. So this does become a somewhat complex subject. But then why should we expect the knowledge of God to be ABC for children? It's the highest knowledge and we should make some effort to try to understand it. But uh, we can simplify it also. We are recommended to uh, focus our attention on one form of Vishnu. But we should understand that he does manifest himself in various forms. If you want something very simple with just blind faith suitable for children, well, you can have that, but it won't help you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Tamil and then explain it to me again in English. So he said, is it not time for Lord Krishna to take another time? And what else after that? And he said, uh, the question they are asking is because uh, people are uh, fighting differently in the and they are not happy, they are having some the problems. Why is the situation? And God comes. Well, uh, the, the condition of this material world is, is Dukhalayam, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. It is a place of misery. And especially in Kali Yoga, so Krishna comes to this world from time to time and he sends his representatives also. Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita directly to Arjuna. And uh, anyone who speaks the same message without any change, we can get the same benefit as Arjuna did from hearing from Krishna. If we hear from someone who repeats the message in the same way without changing it. The Srila Prabhupada went all over the world and gave the message of Bhagavad Gita as it is. And in this way he has 
manifested Krishna in so many people's hearts. So Krishna is present in this world now, in the form of this Hare Krishna movement, in the form of his teachings of Bhagavad Gita, which are being preached all over the world, in the, in the form of the Hare Krishna mantra, which is being vibrated all over the world. So everyone can take advantage. Krishna, when he comes, some people take advantage and others, they, they're not interested. So we can't help those who are not interested. Krishna gives us some independence to choose to accept him or to choose not to accept him. So he is present now and everyone can be benefited by this Hare Krishna movement. So you please take up this Krishna consciousness very seriously. Krishna will manifest himself in your heart and you can help so many others come out of their misery and come to Krishna. Yeah. How do we define devotion? Whether it relates to the form or formless. It is Sankara. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad devotion is two types. One is devotion to the form. And another is devotion to the formless. Sagun Nirgun Brahma. Sagun Nirgun. Mm. What we are talking here is uh, it relates to Saguna. Now it relates to the Nirguna. That is number one. Okay. Number one. Yes, that is number one. Number one. What is the different whether the divinity expresses itself by the destiny prapta. Whether they are all controlled completely by the prapta or the destiny. Or we have self-effort free will. That is number two. Number three. Just one minute. We can tell people who are want, leaving, they can take prasadam. I think we should take one, one by one questions. Let's go one by one because people are. You see, people are leaving now. So. I th- we should take questions. I think we should. Finally, I will. I will come to the question. What is sacrifice? So, supreme knowledge is attacked only by sacrifice to be. Sacrifice I think you should announce the books and everything now, and then we can go on afterward. People are leaving. People's tolerance level has a six session course. You better do it quick because everyone's leaving. So, so, thank you to the Swami Gal for the questions which uh, I think we'll just have to we'll just have to deal with them quite quickly because it seems that many people they're ready to go people have to send their children to school tomorrow and travel some distance and so many things and obvi- obviously these topics they could be dealt with at great length uh, but briefly I will Uh, On the topic of Sagun Brahma and Nirgun Brahma, uh, this is fully harmonized in Srimad Bhagavatam. Vadanti tat tat vidas tatvam yaj jnanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavaniti shabhyate. That one supreme Brahman is known as Brahman, as Paramatma and as Bhagavan. Uh, Bhakti is uh, fully manifest to the person Bhagavan. Because Bhakti means uh, Rishikanam, Rishikeshas, what is that? Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam, Bhakti Ruchase, Sarvo Padivinir Muktam, Tatparatvena Nirmilam, Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam, Bhakti Ruchase. 
Bhakti means to engage the purified senses in the service of the master of the senses. So the uh, full manifestation of bhakti has to be to engage the senses by touching, tasting, smelling, feeling, hearing in relation to Bhagavan. So this means the form of Bhagavan. We to see, we have to see the form of Bhagavan. To hear, we have to hear the name. It is not quality less, it is with full qualities. So nirgun can be understood to be without material qualities. Beyond tamaguna, rajaguna, sattaguna, there is the uh, transcendental guna, shuddha sattva. Actually there cannot be anything without any guna or quality. Even if we say nirguna, that is a description of it. So there must be some conceptualization of it. What was the second, what was the second question? Oh, is are we completely controlled or not? Well, if there's total destiny, then there's no meaning to speaking Bhagavad Gita. After speaking Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said to Arjuna, Yatechasitatakuru. Now I've told you everything, now you decide what to do. So we are to a large extent controlled. I did not choose to be born in a particular body in a particular time or a particular place. So according to our previous karmas, we get different bodies. But in human life, we have the independence and intelligence to choose how to use the situation we are in. And in this way, we can make more, we make more karmas, good or bad karmas, or we can become free from all karmas also. If we were totally controlled, we would be nothing more than figures in a cartoon. There would be no meaning to bhakti or bhagavan or anything. Then what was the third question? There's the third question he was asking. He was giving, what is sacrifice? Well, there's the, yeah. Well, we have the English word sacrifice, and that's often uh, used as a translation of the Sanskrit word yagya. Oh, how is divinity to be attained? Well, that's Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita. Karmana na putraina. What is the definition of sacrifice? Okay, I, I, shall we just answer, take the question as it is now? Is the, is the sacrifice to the divine or sacrifice to the supreme? The supreme. Supreme, yeah, well when we talk about this, did you translate it? Okay. Well when we speak about the supreme, he's the supreme everything, so he's the supreme divine also. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Bhaktya Mama Bijananti. I can be understood, fully understood by Bhakti. So, someone else, this lady was saying, Pragyanam Brahma, all these things. Yeah, give the mic. No sound from the mic. Ah, please, Sulanga, say again. Aham Brahmasmi, but there's another term also, Param Brahma. 
Aham Brahmasmi means I am spiritual by nature. Brahma means Satchidananda, eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. In Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna addresses Krishna as Param Brahma. So he is Satchidananda, but he is Param, he is supreme. Then, uh, then comes the question of Bhakti. Bhakti means service by the subordinate to the superior. So we are Brahma, but he is Param Brahma. And when one actually understands that I am Brahma, then we understand Mamai Vangsho Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. We are part and parcel of the Supreme Brahma and our duty is to serve him. That is Bhakti. Bhakti means relationship of love. Simply to understand that I am divine, that does not evoke feelings of love. But the beautiful form of Krishna, the beautiful names of Krishna, the beautiful leelas of Krishna, that evokes loving feelings. So the full manifestation of understanding Aham Brahma, Aham Brahmasma, is to understand that I am Brahma, Krishna is the Supreme Brahma, I am, have to serve him in bhakti with full love. That is the full, fullest manifestation of divine life. So knowledge is very good and I've spoken a lot about that. But the ultimate aspiration is our heart's love for Krishna. Just like this mother is showing automatically love for her tired son. Taya has her tired son. So she doesn't think, oh my boy, she doesn't make some logical analysis. She puts her hand around him and comforts him. So this is a manifestation of love on the material platform. And love for Krishna is on the spiritual platform unlimitedly greater than any material love. So we can ask all the mothers, you love your children, so give them Krishna's love. That will be the best manifestation of your love for your children. And give them knowledge of Bhagavad Gita also. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, now we heard a strong uh, scientist who had found a new particle, uh, Higgs boson. That is a black particle. And uh, you say that. Is somebody saying? You say that. Uh, God, God. Uh, give up all the things, sacrifice yourself, and you will realize the God. And whether to follow Higgs boson. God's particle, that's a scientist are doing some miracles. So, this to follow, whether to follow the divine or to follow the science. Well, the term God particle is a bit overblown. The particle is not God. We had better, we'd better ask who made the particle and worship that person. The best scientist will worship God. You'll understand that I'm applying my intelligence to understand this whole cosmos. It's so complex. Who has made it must be the greatest scientist. That is the perfection of science. Thank you, sir. Hare Krishna. Um, then I'm told, uh, if we purify our five senses makes, we can see the God. Um, my question is, when we sleep in, all of our five senses are switched off as well as meditation also. So, through meditation, we can see the God makes. Why we can't see the God while sleeping? Purify the senses doesn't mean just to turn them off. Purify the senses means to become free from calm, crowd, lobe, moha, madha, matsarya, lust, greed, anger, illusion, pride and envy. So it's a question of attitude. If we employ the senses for our sense enjoyment, then we're not qualified to see God. If we, pure, if we want to engage our senses in the service of God, then he'll be pleased to reveal himself to us. Nowadays, people think meditation is some kind of relaxation technique or something like this. But actual meditation means dhyana vastita tadga sena manasa pashanti yam yoginaha. Meditation on Vishnu. It's meant for seeing God. If we uh, have the attitude to enjoy this material world, then we'll have dreams of enjoying this material world also. So I think it's... Uh, every, I see people are looking at their watches. So... I think we should finish here, and if anyone would like to discuss with us... Oh, we should introduce some of our Grihastha devotees. Some of our Grihastha devotees can come up. Vrindavan Nath Prabhu. Yeah, oh, you're busy here, is it? Who else is there? Vrindavan Nath and wife, Gaur Bhagavan and wife, Sundar Govinda, Hizel. You can just say that they're... 
these are people like you, they're practicing, they have their business, this, that. You can meet them also. Where's your wife? Your wife's there? She's gone outside. You want to come up? With your naughty kids also? Yeah, you can just... You let, they can just say themselves, I'm married and I have my business and this and that. Give them the mic. You can meet them. You meet Gaur Bhagavan also. You have to speak English. Children? Come. So, you can say if they would like to meet you. Yeah, okay. All right then. So, Hare Krishna, Rambanandri, Hare Krishna.